Good morning, grade nines. Now, today we are going to look at our first sonnet called Sonnet 104 by William Shakespeare. So underneath the note on the features of sonnets, I would like you to write a big heading Sonnet 104 and then underneath that write by William Shakespeare. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is look to see what kind of sonnet this is. Now remember I told you when you are asked that question, first thing you are going to do is look at the last two lines to see if they rhyme. So in the second last line we have the word unbred and then in the last line dead. Unbred, dead. Do they rhyme? Yes, they do. So therefore it is a rhyming couplet. So this is a Shakespearean sonnet. So as we go through the poem, you can see if the other um, features of a Shakespearean sonnet are there. But our first clue that this is a Shakespearean sonnet is the rhyming couplet at the end. Okay, let us go through the poem together. To me, fair friend, you never can be old. For as you were when first your eye I eyed, such seems your beauty still, three winters cold, have from the forest shook three summers pride. Three beauteous springs to yellow autumn turned, in process of the season have I seen. Three April perfumes in three hot Junes burned, since first I saw you fresh, which yet are green. Ah, yet doth beauty, like a dull hand, steal from his figure and no pace perceived. So your sweet you, which methinks still doth stand, hath motion and mine eye may be deceived. For fear of which, ye this, thou age unbred, ye you were born, was beauty's summer dead. Okay, so it's a beautiful love poem, um, written to the person that the speaker of the poem loves, saying that she ha is as beautiful today as the day that he first met her. So as although even although time has passed, she has not grown old, she's not grown ugly, she's not gotten fat. She's just as beautiful as the first day that he saw her. So that's basically what Shakespeare is saying. Now what we need to remember is that Shakespeare, during Shakespeare's time, he lived during the 1600s and during that time expressions of love, shows of affection, um, even amongst married couples was considered taboo. It was considered to be wrong against the, the church um, so people would have considered it to be evil. So um, people couldn't really publicly express their loves. Now, although Shakespeare was a Renaissance writer, which meant that he was writing to bring about change in the way that society thought, and he was trying to break those barriers, he still couldn't be so blatant. So that is why even in line one, he does not refer to his girlfriend or his lover or even the love of his life, but he refers to the person as his fair friend, um, which is an indication that this was more than just any old friend, that this person was special to him. So that is proof that the person that he's speaking to is somebody that he, he cared for very deeply. The alliteration there, fair friend, is emphasizing what type of friend he's actually referring to. So it draws our attention to the fact that it's not just any old friend, but it's a fair friend, a special friend, a dear friend. Um, and when we read the rest of the poem, we then see that he is expressing his love for this person. So he goes to say, and he says, My, to me, fair friend, you never can be old. So you will never be old to me. So yes, you will grow old. And yes, to society and to the rest of the world, you might be old, but to me, you will never be old. Because to me, you will be as beautiful and as young as the day I met you. To me, fair friend, you never can be old. For as you were when first your eye, eye, eye. It's a bit of a tongue twister there, um, using homonyms. I, 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 since the day that I first saw you. Such seems your beauty still. Such seems um, if something seems to be true, it's not proven to be true. So such seems your beauty still. So to me, you appear to be more beautiful. It might not be true to everyone else, but to me, you are still so beautiful. Three winters cold have from the forest shook three summers pride. So there is our first quatrain. And he's talking about three winters, three summers. So we can assume that three years have passed. Um, 
since the first time he saw her. Um, and he's talking about cold winters in, in England. It gets very cold. Trees die. Um, it's very dark. It's, it's, it's a horrible time in England. But he also speaks about summer's pride. So summer's pride could be the beautiful flowers and all the different colors, all the different beautiful smells from the trees, the fruit that will be so we can eat, even just the sun that shines and the warm weather that we will feel. So in winter, it is cold and horrible, but in summer, it is beautiful. And he's indicating time has passed. But also, it's a metaphor for... Um, periods of our life when winter it will be cold and horrible so that would be bad things troubles that happen problems that you had to face and then summer's pride would be a metaphor for the fun and the good times that you have so he's saying even in the bad times and even although there have been troubles and problems you are still as beautiful as the day i met you three beauteous springs to yellow autumn turned in process of the seasons have I seen. So again, the number three, which in probably is indicating the time, the number of years that have passed. But he speaks about beauty as spring. Spring is beautiful. It's rebirth. It's the time that the grass turns green or the leaves start, buds come out on the trees and um, you start getting beautiful smells as the flowers start to blossom. So it is a beautiful time. And then he goes to it talks about yellow autumn. Yellow autumn, that is reference to the leaves that will turn from green to yellow as they start preparing for winter. Um, three April perfumes in three hot Junes burned, since first I saw you fresh, which yet are green. So again, he's using a metaphor there because he's saying that um, three... Years have passed, three seasons, three full seasons, summer, winter, spring, and autumn. Three full seasons have passed since the first time I saw you, but you are still as beautiful, you are still as fresh, you are still as young as you were then. So the green is referencing the grass and possibly the trees that as they start out as the young uh, tree, it's green and it's fresh and it's new, and that is what he is comparing her to, he's saying that she is still as fresh and as green as the as when she was young. Ah, oh, yet doth beauty, like a dull hand, steal from his figure, and no pace perceive. So, ah, oh, there is the turn of the poem, the change. In the first two quatrains, he's acknowledging that he loves her, and that she's as beautiful as the first time he met her, and, but now he's acknowledging now in the turn that time has passed. So he's referencing the fact that he knows time has passed. Um, but when he looks at her, it seems as if time has not passed. So he goes, he says, Yet, ah, yet doth beauty like a, tall, a dull hand steal from his figure and no pace perceived. No pace perceived. We have alliteration there um, emphasizing pace. Um, which is reference to time as well. And then just in the line above, we see a simile. And he is comparing beauty, not necessarily her beauty, but beauty in general, to a dial hand. Now, a dial hand is an old-fashioned clock. Um, in the olden days, they used to use it to look, use the sun to see the shadows and determine the time of the day, depending on the shadow. And obviously, the bigger the shadow the later the hour. So um, he's saying that as the dull hand steals his figure, it goes from being a thin shadow to a big shadow. Um, but you don't actually notice it because if you're watching that dull hand, you won't notice the time pass. But if you look at the dial and then come back three or four hours later, you will then notice time has passed. So he's saying that we don't notice time passing. We don't notice beauty, beauty fading. We don't notice somebody getting old, but it happens. Um, so sweet, so your sweet you, which me thinks still doth stand, hath motion and mine eye may be deceived. He then goes back to her specifically and he says, so your sweet you, you is your, your complexion. Um, it's the shade of your a hue is the shade of a color. So he's talking about her complexion. 
He said, me thinks your you still doth stand. I think that your appearance is unchanged. You are still the same as when I first met you. Um, but he acknowledges that perhaps he has been deceived. Um, not in a negative way that somebody has lied, but in a way that you've perhaps been tricked. He doesn't see that her beauty has faded. So he's acknowledging that she's old, but to him, she still is as beautiful as when she, he first saw her, which is a beautiful thing. You all, we all want someone to love us unconditionally and to see our beauty regardless. So he's expressing his love for her in that line there. And then in the rhyming couplet, he says, For fear of which, hear this, thou age unbred, ere you were born, was beauty summer dead. And he's saying, if you don't believe what I'm saying, generations that haven't even been born yet. Understand this, that by the time you come along, beauty is dead, because this person that I'm speaking about would have died, and then beauty will die with her. She is that beautiful. She is the epitome of beauty. So yeah, that's the love poem. He's expressing his love for her, um, which would have been a very bold move in Shakespeare's time, let me tell you, but it's a beautiful love poem nonetheless. Okay, so if you scroll down grade 9, you will see there is just a modern um, rendition of what the poem is about, explaining to you um, which, uh, the, what, what he's saying. You can read it um, to your, by yourself. And then there are the questions. There are nine questions. I would like you to answer those in your books, please. Um, and obviously we will mark that when we get back to school. If there are any questions, anything you don't understand, then please um, uh, drop the question down and then you can ask your teacher when you get back to school. I just want to draw your attention to number seven. The question is explain the volta in line nine. It's explain the turn in line nine. There was a mistake there. So please just correct that. Okay, good. goodbye and good luck.